Which NAS is the right NAS for you? Synology or TrueNAS? And I know there's a lot of other ones out there and I'll talk about those towards the end of the video, but this is mostly gonna be focused on the features as they are here in December of 2024 of Synology and TrueNAS. There's a lot to talk about with them. There's a lot to compare. And yes, I've done this video before, but it needs to be updated because there's been so many changes on both of these platforms that I wanna make sure it's current to help you make a decision. Cause there's a lot of time that you put into the choice and the setup of the NAS that works for you. So you wanna not have have to go down the wrong path to find something that is kind of a gotcha of why it won't work for you. So let's get started. You have a lot of data to manage. Security Information and Event Management, or SIM, was designed to help. But most SIMs are overly complicated, create noisy data, and are way too expensive. Huntress Managed SIM is built to give you everything you need from a SIM and nothing you don't. Get their smart filtering to cut through noisy data, 24-7 monitoring from their expert SOC, and compliance assistance, all at a clear, predictable price. Follow the link in the description below and experience Managed Sim for yourself with a free trial. Now you'll find a link to this forum post in the description below. And I want to also note that TrueNAS Scale is the only one I recommend here in December of 2024. Essentially, TrueNAS Core has reached not quite, but towards end of life. It's not what I would base my new NAS on today, either for business or for your personal use. Now, operating system-wise, these are both Linux-based, but Synology only runs on their own hardware and it's also not open source. So it's gonna be very tightly controlled by Synology, how this system loads and how it works. And it's designed, and I know there's projects that kind of forked away from it that you can use to get the uh, Synology-like operating system, the Xpanology, but that goes off topic of this. I'm focusing on just the actual supported Synology system. Now, central management, they both do have these options. True command is, something you can use to centrally manage your TrueNAS servers, and Synology has their Active Insights. True Command is actually self-hostable. Active Insights isn't, it requires you to use the Synology Cloud if you want to use it. It's not a requirement other than if you want to use a central dashboard to manage a bunch of your NAS systems at once, but that is an option. High availability. This used to say on IX systems and Gluster, but the Gluster project has now become defunct. So currently there's only high availability if you buy the IX systems hardware. As I mentioned, it's Linux based and you can certainly DIY your own NAS, but they do sell hardware, IX systems being the company that supports and funds the development of the TrueNAS software. The high availability options vary by model. I have a link where I talk about how high availability works, but you can also look on the Synology site and they have which models support either having a dual chassis system for high availability or using two Synologies and having failover between them. Both of those are options depending on the model of Synology. They both use a web-based interface. External management via relay proxy. What that means is if you would like to externally manage your TrueNAS, I would highly recommend not doing this, but you could open it up to the world and that would be a terrible idea. More secure way to do this would be set up a VPN, but obviously that's a few more steps. Synology has the ability to use the Synology website. It's an option. You can register it with Synology and it will create a portal by which you can externally access your NAS. I don't prefer that particular methodology, but I want to mention it exists for those of you that want to be able to create a portal, but not open up any ports in your firewall and use their relay system for it. It's a built-in feature of Synology they currently do not charge for. Hard drive support. Well, it kind of varies because if you're using IX systems hardware or you're building your own hardware, you'll choose what hard drive support based on the hardware you're using. And it varies by model with Synology. There've been some changes over time with what hard drives they support and they've expanded some of them. The home user ones or the desktop ones, I usually kind of refer to them as home user ones, don't seem to have the drive lock-in that some of their larger rack mount ones have. That varies and you should look at the model before you buy it. What I mean by lock-in is the drives are very narrow and specified. Like these are the drives we support. These are the brands and models we support. Could you use other drives? Yes, but you'll get a bunch of errors all the time that tells you you're using an unofficial drive for it. Is there a hack around it? Well, you can Google and figure that out that you can probably modify systems and add them to a list behind the scenes, but that's off topic and out of scope of this video of how to do that. File system support, ZFS versus ButterFS or EXT4. 
ext4 and butterfs are both supported on synology the raid in synology is actually your standard linux raid and then sitting on top of that is the file system zfs is one and the same zfs is a type of RAID, but it also directly talks to the drives. So when we get down to RAID support, we have D-RAID, RAID Z, RAID Z2, RAID Z3, mirrors, ZFS special VDEV types. I've got a lot of detailed videos on that. I haven't done one on D-RAID as the recording of this, but those are all supported options on there. You have your RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, SHR, F1, and JBOD. And I just linked to this analogy knowledge base article because they kind of explain all the different variations that they have on RAID. Now, the next thing to talk about here is going to be ZFS expansion. Expanding existing RAID setups was a big stopper for a lot of people when it came to using TrueNAS because you would build these out and I've got a whole video about how VDEVs get set up and details about ZFS. And that was always this part that people stopped at going, well, this is complicated to do any expansion. There's a way you can do it in the past with symmetrical VDEVs. And that was obviously more complicated versus the way you can do it now with, I just want to add one drive. And I have four drives and I'd like to have five. I have five drives. I'd like to have six. Those are supported features now. That is a huge change and will change probably a lot of people's minds about whether or not they want to build something using TrueNAS because of the ZFS expansion. It can be done in Synology. I love the link to the knowledge base article for the parameters for it, but Synology does support RAID expansion because they're using Linux RAID and Linux RAID has that feature support and has for a long time. They both support deduplication. They both have virtualization support. They both have Docker support, but I left it at not standard. There is ways to kind of use standard Docker on either of these by putting in third-party applications on there. That's a little out of scope of what people might be looking for because it's more complicated than just using the UI. I said not standard in Synology, but they did add and update their container manager to support Docker Compose. There's still a little bit of Synology custom that you have to do, and there's plenty of documentation on it. I love that they both have Docker support, but I still call it not standard because it's not like just, hey, run this Docker script and it just works automatically like it would on a system that you have built dedicated for Docker. But you can make Docker applications work on both of these platforms. And that is huge for just being able to pull in any app you really want on your NAS. Native encryption. Yes, if you're using ZFS. Yes, if you're using ButterFS. I don't think they have any encryption options if you're using ext4. If you're using ButterFS, you can do the full drive encryption on there. Snapshot support, yes with ZFS, and yes as long as you're using ButterFS. Replication, both of them support replication. ButterFS has a replication feature, ZFS does. I want to be very clear though, the replication is amazing on both of them, but it does require that the target also be running the same file system. So yes to other Synology running ButterFS and yes to ZFS targets running TrueNAS scale or core. They're still currently, as of the recording of this video, cross-compatible. Honestly, because it's just ZFS send, that is a feature of ZFS. So you could technically target another device running ZFS. So if you just loaded up a Linux system, and there may be a way, but I've never tried to figure out a way to use the ButterFS features to send because Synology send with ButterFS is kind of obscured from you. They're using ButterFS and it expects to connect to another Synology to do it. You could probably figure out how to do it from the command line, but if you're using the UI tools, it's definitely Synology to Synology that is also running ButterFS. Backup to external services. Both of these are able to backup to popular cloud services. You can do some customization here if you have a custom target where you want to send that data. So if you, the list doesn't fit what you're looking for, such as Backblaze or StoreJ or any of the other ones that are available in TrueNAS and many of the same ones that are also available in Synology, they do have some ways to customize where you may want to send that offsite data. You can, of course, just send it to another NAS that is at another location. That's another way to do a backup. Plugins and extensions. Yes, they both have app catalogs. Synology's is a little bit smaller, but very well curated. And the Synology apps are going to be really easy to set up. The app catalog is ever changing and a lot of community supported app with some IX systems, the people behind TrueNAS supporting the apps. There is the ability to add third party app catalogs. I've not researched how many are available for TrueNAS, but I, that does exist. But their app catalogs are decent. That is going to be kind of a sticking point with some people because of the complexity of the way they set up on TrueNAS being that they're community supported versus the Synology apps being 100% Synology supported with just a couple third-party apps. They just work. That is the one thing that 
does turn a lot of people on Synology is ease of use. And the apps are one of those things, and we'll talk about a few of them in a moment, that really makes Synology a pretty popular choice for people because they just want to turn it on, set it, and forget it, have it auto-update the apps and not worry about breakage. Synology is going to be very, very solid for that. Sharing a file over the internet. Very common question. I added this to this version because it just doesn't really exist in SureNAS because they are an open source tool that gives you the appliance to get things done, but not everything such as sharing a file over the internet where you'd want to be able to create some type of share link, which would require some type of proxy server to set up. So it's not that you can't build something out with the application catalog and set up some external proxy, but that's already built into Synology. So the Synology file share lets you, provided you register with the proxy system that they offer through Synology's site and register with their cloud to right click on a file and create a link to be able to send this. Definitely a really handy feature but it obviously comes with the risk because you have to tie to Synology's cloud. That's not something that's supported in TrueNAS. Active Directory support, yes and yes. Application setup and management. I just put the words easy setup because I mentioned earlier, I've got a more complex how-to video on setting up permissions and application setup with data sets, et cetera. There's just a lot more to it. And as long as you're willing to put the time in, it is a lot you can do with TrueNAS and their applications, but it's not as easy as just install app and it works like magic. That's where Synology, as I said, just kind of has a little bit of an advantage on there. Surveillance system. I really still love Synology Surveillance Station. I think it's great. They do require licenses, but the licenses are one-time purchase and they are perpetual. They are also transferable, so you don't have to keep paying for recurring licenses. But yes, with non-Synology cameras, they do have a license. If you buy the Synology cameras, they have a license built in. The camera support is very, very broad with Synology and their surveillance system. I've got several videos on that topic. Backing up your computers. Well, there's not really any apps I've seen in a catalog that are designed specifically to like make full image backups to your computer versus Active Backup is an amazing piece of software and one of my favorites in Synology because I use it to back up workstations that I have. Even this computer I'm doing the recording on is backed up automatically via Synology Active Backup. Office 365 backups and G Suite backups, or I think it's called Google Apps now. I should probably fix that here. Google likes changing names of things. That works beautifully on Synology. There's not an equivalent with TrueNAS. I didn't see any app that will automatically do this for you. It doesn't mean you can't find something and add it via Docker, but there's not anything currently in our app catalog to support this versus the Synology. It's very smooth. It works really well. It can back up license-free on many of their models, the Office 365 or Google Apps backups. It's really just a great feature, much like their active backup. They refer to it as their active backup for business more specifically. Photo app with phone support. If you go through the trouble of setting it up, see the application management setup video I mentioned, you can set up image, which is in their app catalog. I know that's a pretty popular tool here in December of 2024 for doing backups to your photos. Synology Photos has been around a while. Uh, works fine. I use it to backup photos on my phone. I've not had any problems with it. It's a nice application. Office Suite. I put a question mark with Nextcloud. Nextcloud has been one of the more headache applications. It's got to be the one that I say breaks the most. I've done videos on it, and then people always comment that the video doesn't work because they've changed it again or they did an update and it broke. I haven't decided if I want to keep doing videos because it feels like every time I do them or every time someone has an update, something kind of goes awry with Nextcloud. I think Nextcloud is a really, really feature-rich system. And they're constantly adding more features that seem to break with updates. And that's why I have a hard time recommending it. I know some people may have a better time with it or maybe know how to do all the workarounds as I do. But as a content creator trying to create tutorials on it, when everything keeps changing, it becomes very difficult. And when it breaks on updates, it becomes even more difficult to recommend. Uh, I have installed Synology Office and I use it very limited, mostly as a testing. And over the few years that I've had these handful of documents, just some personal notes I keep, I can't believe it's never broke at all. It's worked perfectly smooth. So by comparison from a usage experience, Synology Office just works. And yeah, uh, their phone app and mobile app, I haven't liked at all, but at least from a web application, it works really well. File app for client syncing. 
Sync thing is a great tool. I did a video on it recently. It is in the application catalog of Chernas. Uh, Synology has the Synology Drive and mobile client to be able to do syncing. Media Player, Plex and MB are in the app list. Uh, Plex and MB, I know there's been some changes to Video Station. I don't know how many people actually use it, but the uh, Plex and MB are probably going to be your more popular ones that you can certainly put on a Synology and get set up for your multimedia needs. Now let's talk about alternatives. Probably one of the biggest ones I've seen in the home user market, probably very much popularized by Linus Tech Tips, is going to be Unraid. That is an interesting product. I did watch Techno Tim's video, which you find linked down below, and there's several other channels like Space Invader One where you can dive into Unraid, learn a lot about it. I didn't find any compelling reason that I should use it, but that doesn't mean it's not a good system. It's just not for me, but it may be for you. And I don't have any gotchas. Don't run it because of this. I don't have any complaints at all about Unraid other than it doesn't really fit my use case. It doesn't have the performance that I need out of my NAS systems. Therefore, it's really not for me, but I do understand its attraction, its ease of use, and the use case that is Unraid. It is also not open source for those wondering. It is a Linux-based RAID system and does have a license fee attached. The next one is Unify, who got in the NAS game here in 2024. I've got a video you'll find also linked down below. They're kind of interesting because their value proposition is we built an inexpensive NAS and I can't sell you a pile of hardware to build your own NAS to match the price that Unify is selling here in 2024 their NAS at. It's a nice complete system that's under $500 at $499, so right on the edge. So it's a $500 NAS with seven bays and Probably not going to ever get any application support. I don't see that as its use case, but for those of you that go, hey, I just need some file storage and some of those other features like being able to share and link a file. Those are features that are built right in. The ease of use comes from the Unify software, of course, the integration with the other Unify ecosystem. I think they did a good job. I also think that they did a great job on release of it, offering support for third-party authentication, such as Active Directory, Entra ID, Jump Cloud, and others. Having that built in is a good use case for a lot of businesses. They go, I just need storage at this location. I don't want to put a server in. We're already using something like Azure. I think that's a niche, great use case, but it might not be what the home users watching this video are looking for, but the business users might go, well, that's a good price. And that's a simple integration that integrates with all of my current identity providers. So I'm going to go with the little 499 NAS solution and problem solved because it even has a 10 gig hookup. And that's just wild for 499. The last one I'll mention that I see a little bit of questions about from time to time is Zynga NAS. That's actually a fork of the original free NAS from version nine, I believe. They forked and kept development path on BSD. I hear it mentioned from time to time on two and a half admins. Occasionally people mention a comment. Someone actually sent me a message the other day asking me about it. I don't, once again, have any reason not to use it, like if you really like FreeBSD, but that's where the problem is. The same reasons TrueNAS Core is reaching kind of end of life is because of the lack of hardware support in BSD. BSD development isn't what it used to be. I don't know what the future of FreeBSD looks like. It's certainly not going away anytime soon, but I don't know what the long-term future looks like. And what if you're trying to find a piece of hardware and trying to get support for it, and then you find out it's not supported in BSD? Well, that was the problem with Core, and this is probably still going to be somewhat of a problem with Zynga NAS. And I'll leave a link to it if you're interested in checking it out. I don't know of any videos that are, I don't have any videos of people I know or trust that have done in-depth reviews, but at least one more option I'll throw out there for the hardcore BSD fans. And I get it because I do think BSD is really cool, but I have to deal with the world as it is. And Linux is certainly dominating here. So which NAS is the right NAS for you? Was it true NAS? Was it Synology? One of the other ones I mentioned towards the end or another one? Leave those thoughts and comments down below. Love hearing from all of you. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com, where we can have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect me on whatever socials you find me on there at the time you go because, well, socials change and I try to be on all the ones where my audience is. So see you online and thanks.